Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. After creating a public folder, you are the folder's owner. It is up to you to decide which users on your network can access the folder and also what types of activities they can perform if they do have access to the folder. If you are the folder's owner, or have been given the owner's permission by the folder's owner, then you can set the folder's permissions by right-clicking on the public folder for which you want to set the permissions in the folder list, and then selecting the Properties command from the pop-up menu that appears. This will launch the Properties dialog box where you'll be able to set the permissions for the selected public folder. Now if you see a tab at the top that says Summary, that means that you do not have the required permission level to modify the permissions for that folder. If you believe that you should have that permission level, contact your network administrator or the folder's owner to change your permission settings. If you can set permissions on the folder, then you should see a tab at the top that says Permissions when you view the Properties dialog box. You can click that tab to view permissions that have been set for the folder. There are three permissions created by default the folder owner's permission, the default permission, and the anonymous permission. The default permission is the permission level granted to all of the other users on the network who do not have explicitly defined permissions for the selected folder. You can modify the permission level of the default identity to change the permission level of all the users who access this public folder. To do this, simply click the default identity from the list at the top of the Permissions tab, and then look to see what permissions have been set for that role in the Permissions section below it. You can then use the Permission Level drop-down menu to change the role of the default permission. That will modify the associated abilities listed beneath the Permission Level drop-down box depending on the permission level that you choose from the list. Depending on the type of material that you'll be placing into the folder, you may want to completely restrict access to the default permission, and then specify permissions for each individual user on the network to whom you wish to grant folder access. If the material needs to be accessed by everyone, you can also change the default permission so at least everyone can see the material in the folder, if not edit it. Then you could add users to whom you want to grant editing and deleting permissions in that folder. You can add individuals or groups to the permission list of the folder as long as they are on your network. That way you can modify the permission levels of the individual users and user groups in your network. And this allows you to have more control over who has access to your public folder and what activities they can perform within the folder. You can also delete user permissions that are no longer applicable. For example, if a user were to leave the office, you should delete any access to the public folders that they had. Now, if you're interested in setting strict security over the contents of the folder, consider adding and setting individual permissions for only the users that you want to have access to the public folder, and then setting the default permission level to none, and possibly even removing the folder visibility property. To add a user or a user group on the Permissions tab, click the Add button below the list of user permissions shown for the folder. That will launch the Add Users dialog box, and this is very similar to the Select Names dialog box that is used to address email. You simply select the name of the user or users that you would like to add from the list, and then just click the Add button to move the users to the text box at the bottom. When you've finished adding the users for which you would like to set individual folder permissions, click OK to add them to the permissions list. Then to specify each user's permission settings, select their names in the permissions list and then choose a role from the permission level drop-down below the list. You can set the permission level of any selected user or user group which you have granted folder access to by choosing one of the permission levels shown in the permission level drop-down. Simply click the user or group name from the name list and then select the permission level from the permission level drop-down. Now the owner permission grants to the user the ability to create, read, change, and delete any items in the folder. They can create subfolders and they can grant and modify all permissions for the folder. 
A publishing editor can create, read, change, and delete all items, and can also create subfolders. An editor can create, read, change, and delete all items. A publishing author can create and read items and create subfolders. They can also change and delete items that they created. An author can create and read items and can also change and delete items they created. A non-editing author can create and read items. A reviewer can read items only. A contributor can create items only. The contents of the folder will not appear, so they don't have read access. You can also create a custom permission, or you can specify that they have no permission to the folder. Now, the folder owner can create a custom permission level by simply manually applying the desired individual permission level settings shown in the section below the permission level dropdown. So this allows you to customize permission settings in case the permission levels specified by the dropdown do not fully allow or restrict the particular activities desired by the folder's owner. Once you've set your desired properties for the selected permissions, just click OK at the bottom of the Folder Properties dialog box to apply the permissions. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.